Welcome back to some more Miyakashi. So, from what I remember where we last left off, we wrapped up chapter 4. And then, all of a sudden, a few chapters in, Reina, out of the, uh, all the main characters, um, went a little bit creepy there. So, she either figured out some few suspicions of some sort when it comes to Shion, trying to disguise herself, and... <laughs> this ain't good. But, out of all things, we'll see how this goes. President, if you would. For a moment, I forgot that the class president was me. Uh, 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 uh. All right. Looks like you didn't get enough sleep. I know it's been very hot at night lately, but try to get as much sleep as you can. All right, everyone? Yes, ma'am. I'm not sure this place can be called a school. Okay, so... Apparently... Shion... Is now disguising herself as Mion at a... Uh, an all-age school. And... Even though they're like twin sisters, from what I remember, dude. Shion plays... Her personality is way different compared to her, despite, like, her trying to, like, see if she can actually blend in, in a way. I'm not sure this place can be called a school, because there are so many different age groups. It, it's like a kindergarten and an elementary school blended together. I'm pretty sure there's middle schoolers. Since I'd heard already about what this place was like, I didn't feel that uncomfortable. It wasn't too difficult to add, like, me on here. As Sis told me, Satoshi Kun looked exhausted. I said hi to him, but he ignored me. Since I knew what he'd been going through, his pain looked apparent to me. I was interested in another person in his classroom. Sotoko, Satoshi Kun's little sister. She looked as worn out as Satoshi Kun, emotionless like an abandoned doll. Everybody in this room was aware of their circumstances, but no one could do anything for them. So they just acted as though nothing was wrong. Mayon will only let me have this one day. If I slacked off even a little bit, today would be over with quickly. I had to figure out what I should do in this limited time. I should probably talk to Satoshi Kun. About what? Anything goes. Cheer him up. Sympathize with him. Anything will do. More than anything, I just wanted to chat with him. However, Sid's... However, Sis had told me. She said Satoshi Kun didn't communicate much with her lately and had distanced himself from her. I figured I shouldn't talk to him too casually. I wanted to, but maybe it was better to leave him alone. I needed to keep Sis's warnings in mind. But instead, I decided to ignore them. I looked for Satoshi-kun during lunch break. He was walking as if looking for a place where he could be alone. I caught him in the hallway. Satoshi-kun. He turned around, startled by my voice. His facial expression surprised me. He was scowling, clearly a sign of rejection. But I couldn't hesitate. I'd lose my only chance if I did. Hey, um, how are you? He gave me a look as if saying, Do I look fine to you? I never expected to see an expression like that on his face. I felt like my heart was being torn into pieces. As I looked down, he spoke to me. I felt a little glad, but the next thing he said changed that. I'm fine. Is there anything else? Eh? I'll get going if there isn't, because I wanted to be alone. Uh, okay, I guess you're tired from work. I'm sure you want some time to yourself. You're working today too, right? Where at? Sis had found several jobs for him. He worked at a few different places. He was helping out when necessary at any of the shops Mian introduced him to. As a result, he constantly had to do different tasks into a, in a different environment almost every time. On top of that, he requested high-paying jobs from Mian because he wanted a large sum of money as soon as possible. In other words, he chose to mostly do manual labor. He was exhausted every day because he wasn't that physically strong. Does it matter? And shouldn't you know because you helped me get the job? 
Mion did help him get the job, yet Satoshi-kun didn't look thankful for that opportunity. This wasn't like him at all. It made me feel sad. <laughs> You're right. Sorry. Is that all? He sounded so harsh. Why was he being like that? Would he ever stroke my head again? Oh. I couldn't help my tears. They flowed onto my cheeks. Satoshi-kun looked confused for a moment, but then he frowned again. Uh, sorry. Uh, the coach said he wanted you to come back to practice. <laughs> I told him I quit, so I won't be going back. But, but maybe it's a good idea to work out from time to time. You know? Not interested. I didn't know why he was being so hostile towards me. Why did he hate me so much? I was left bewildered. Why? How come? Because I'm busy with work. Is it obvious? No, I didn't mean that. Why do you hate me so much? Why don't you ask yourself? Ask myself? What? What did I do? I don't understand, Satoshi-kun. I couldn't control my emotions any longer. Streaks of tears ran down my cheeks. Satoshi-kun gave me a hateful glare and walked away without saying another word. I couldn't even stop him. If I tried, he'd hurt me again with another cutting remark. I couldn't bear that, so I just watched him walk away. I'd wiped my tears and went back to the classroom. I heard somebody crying from inside. What's going on? I looked around the room to see. It was Satoko. Oh boy, pretty sure I remember that scene. I saw her bento box on the floor. I asked one of her classmates what happened, and it seemed that Satoko had bumped into somebody's shoulder when she stood up to go wash the box out. That was all. But Satoko was crying as if afraid she was going to be chided badly. What happened was very minor. She could just pick up the bento box and things would be fine. It looked like the lid came a little loose, but it was definitely fixable. She didn't have to cry like that. Yet Satoko started begging through her tears. Help! Help me, Nini! Why? Because of what happened with Satoshi-kun, I couldn't suppress my emotions very well. So instead, they exploded. I stormed up to Satoko while elbowing her, while elbowing her classmates aside. I grabbed her by the head, then threw her into the wall. Satoko screamed. She didn't seem to understand what had happened. She was shedding tears and shivering. She must be wondering why I did that. Do you know why I did that? Eek, help, Nini. Satoko cried for her brother's help again. You know, the one thing I don't even understand when it comes to theory is like... So... Okay, so I don't know why Satoshi was being a dick to her, to her or Shion in disguise. So I don't know much about any theories. So either someone ratted out or whatever reason, or maybe Satoshi got some suspicions um, told from some people, like Coach, for example. But other than that cried for her brother's help again, and so I grabbed her head and threw her again. Satoko stumbled and crashed into a desk. The desk fell and the contents of the drawer scattered about. Satoko didn't even stand up. She just crouched and trembled while looking up at me. Help, help, Nini, Nini. If you weren't like that, if you weren't like that, Satoshi-kun wouldn't have to suffer, don't you get it? That's what I wanted to say, but I was too angry to utter another word. I picked up a bunch of textbooks from the floor and threw them at their face. Cry as much as you want, but nothing's going to change. Oh shit. Shion just went ape shit when Satoshi um, made her upset. Her face. Why are you crying? Because you think somebody's going to help you? You don't have any idea? what he has to go through to protect you, do you? You understand that? You understand what you're doing? You shouldn't exist. Die if you don't want to suffer. Go fuck yourself. 
Don't hurt Satoshi Kun. You deserve to die alone. You just deserve to die. Wah. Nini. Nini. Wah. Her desperate cries only increased my irritation. Stop crying. Don't call your brother for help. Stop it. If you weren't like that, if only you. I kept on throwing things at her. Satoka curled up to protect herself and cried even harder. At that point, a girl with long hair ran up and huddled over her. I knew who that was. Rika Farood. Yep. One of Satoko's only friends. Please don't hurt her. She's in a poor situation, so please don't hurt her. Doesn't matter how pathetic she is, she shouldn't rely on Satoshi-kun all the time. Stop spoiling her. Satoshi-kun has to suffer so much because of her. No, stop. Don't hurt her. Rika also became the target of my anger. I'm trying to teach her something here. If you keep getting in the way, I'll crack your head open. I grabbed a chair and lifted it over my head. It wouldn't hurt only a little if I threw this thing at them. Rika tightly closed her eyes and covered Satoka with her body. I didn't care what the consequences would be. I didn't care if I hurt them. Stop! Michan! Reina returned to the classroom and shouted at me. Then Satoshi Kun rushed in while pushing Reina aside. Seeming to have grasped the situation immediately, he charged straight at me. Until my body had hit the locker, I didn't understand what had happened. There was a loud crashing noise. I let the dent in it. I crouched there in pain. Sotoko, are you alright? Nini, Nini, wah. Sotoko pushed Rika aside, jumped at her brother, and started crying again. What happened? Why were you treated like that? Why? I, I didn't do anything but Mian-san, she suddenly... Wah. What's going on, Mian? Satoshi couldn't shout out at me while clutching his sister. He looked fierce. I just... What did Satoko do to deserve this? What did we do? Why do we always have to suffer like this? Why? Why? He released Satoko and rushed up to me, grabbing me by the neck. You said that I should ask myself, didn't you? So why don't you ask yourself? Ask what? I know you feel she's a burden on you. You always have to suffer because of her. You know that, right? If she were stronger, you wouldn't have to suffer. She's the one to blame. I don't believe what I said was wrong, but after hearing it, Satoshi Kun went berserk. What, what, what the heck do you know? Oh, uh. Satoshi Kun grabbed my hair and threw me to the wall just like I did to Satoko. However, I wasn't going to back down. I no longer had any control over my emotions at all. You spent so much time protecting her. She'll never stop relying on you until you stop doing that. What the hell do you know about us? What the heck do you know? You persecuted our parents, and now it's us? That's the way of the Sonazaki family, huh? You torture traitors for fun. Is it fun? Is it fun bullying us? Huh? Stop it. That was Reina's voice. She stepped in, looking as fierce as a demon. Satoshi kun, please. Michan doesn't have any bad intentions. She wanted to help you, but she just lost control a little. Okay? No words. Satoshi Kun looked like he wanted to say something back, but he chose not to. You too, Michan. I know how much you worry about Satoshi Kun. But you can't solve the problem like that. I think you understand, right? Since Satoshi Kun didn't say anything, I kept quiet too. Here, Satoka chan, you don't have to cry just because you dropped your bento box, alright? You feel better now? Satoko, 
I'll pick up the bento for you. Oh, heck, heck. Rika started picking up the bento box while its owner continued to cry. Guys, can you help us clean up? The teacher will be back from the vegetable garden soon. This quarrel is over, so don't tell her about it. Okay? The classmates looked at each other and nodded, then started picking up the stuff on the, on the floor. Here, Satoshi-kun, Michan, why don't you guys shake hands as a sign of reconciliation? Sorry, I didn't mean to do this. Tears started to roll down my cheeks again. I'm sorry, too. You have nothing to do with our family situation. I'm sorry. Okay, Michan, why don't you apologize to Satoko-chan now? I was fine with apologizing to Satoshi-kun, but I didn't want to apologize to her. But the situation wouldn't be settled otherwise, so I reluctantly apologized. Satoko nodded, looking discouraged. After that, Reina let me go. My head ached, so I held it with both hands. What was that? What did I do? I didn't want to use this precious time to fight. Sis had warned me. She told me that I shouldn't talk to Satoshi-kun just like that. What did I come here for? I shouldn't have come here if I knew this was going to happen. Stupid, you're stupid, Shion. I was overcome by emotions because I was so worried about Satoshi-kun. When did things go wrong? Were they wrong from the beginning? I got into a fight with Satoshi-kun. This was totally the opposite of what I wanted. I regretted it. I hated myself for it. I couldn't blame myself enough. My world had been torn apart. I wished the sky would fall and kill me. Sis sounded both amazed and confused. You know, I'm busy with the festival preparations, but you certainly made things more complicated. Sorry. Sis tried to say something, but she stopped in the middle. After listening to a few complaints, I started telling her about everything that happened today. Sis had to pretend that the trouble I caused today was her responsibility, which must have been very taxing for her. So I won't get the chance to trade spots for a while? Hey. I think you should be more aware of the hassle I had to go through. Yeah, you're right. Sis had been sympathetic, but maybe I pushed her too far this time. Of course, she'd be hesitate, hesitant to trade spots, considering what I did today. The atmosphere felt awkward, so we were both silent for a while. If you were to get another chance, what would you do, Shion? That was a reasonable question. I wasn't prepared to answer, though. If I had a chance to go to the school once again and see Satoshi-kun, what would I do? Would I apologize to him about today? I don't think that would work. That might even upset him again, no matter how hard I tried. Okay, here's something that he was saying. It was the Sonozaki family who had been harassing his. It would only be natural for him to hold a grudge against us. But why was he only expressing that now? I've been a Sonozaki to him all along. Satoshi couldn't stroke my head even though he knew that I was me on Sonozaki. Sis, do you think that Satoshi Kun is holding a grudge against the Sonozaki family? I think so, yes. It was our family that initiated the persecution of the Hojo family, making them into scapegoats. Even after the dam conflict, it wasn't easy for the Hojo family to live in Hanamizawa. Given all of that, it's not surprising that Satoshi-kun hates us. The Sonozaki family put his family in a devastating situation. But why now? Why is he only expressing that grudge to us now? No words. Why is this happening now? If he wanted to... Oh... Uh... If he had rejected me in the first place... I wouldn't have wanted to get close to him. My tears wet my cheeks. I didn't bother to wipe them. It's only natural for him to hold a grudge against the Sonozakis. There's nothing unusual about it. 
rather, why has he been treating me like a friend? I knew how stupid this question was. I think it's because he was mature. I can't understand it. Wah. Uh. He'd been treating me as a friend because he was mature? But now that he becomes stressed mentally and physically, he's decided to reject me? No matter how hard I thought about it, I couldn't find anything to fault him with. If there were somebody to blame, it'd be somebody I'd never accused before. Uh, what a complicated household right there. I mean... The, well, Satoshi's aunt... Sato Satoka's aunt, well, she's a fucking bitch. That's my theory right there. See, why didn't Shion blame the aunt even... Well, Shion never... I mean, she hasn't even figured out um, her aunt or whatever fucking uncle, whatever the fuck that happens. I don't know. I mean, she could have just visited... She could have just, like, visited over or some shit like that. But, whatever. There was somebody blamed, somebody I never accused before. Why did the hag decide to persecute the Projo family? Eh? Uh, um... It was his parents who supported the damn project, right? Satoshi couldn't have nothing to do with it. Why was he included? Why? Mion couldn't say anything in return. Actually, it wasn't at all hard to guess the reason. The hag didn't give any specific order to harass the Hojo family. She just thought the Hojo family was getting in the way. The people around her noticed that what was bothering her and took steps to get rid of it. Though, of course, she must have known how influential her own words were. She didn't just think it. She gave what she must have known would be interpreted as an order. She's the one to blame for initiating the attack on the Hojo family. You said before that the Ho that the Farouf priest wasn't mature because he didn't cooperate, right? Is this the same scenario? The Hojo family wasn't mature because they didn't act in accordance with the other villagers? That's why the hag decided to punish them, isn't it? Mion couldn't say anything in return, meaning that my accusation was the truth. They already punished the Hojo couple. Feel free to bring them to the torture room in the garden and chop their fingers off or something. But leave Satoshi-kun alone. Satoshi-kun has nothing to do with this. What did he do to deserve this? What did he do wrong? Answer me. Answer me. Mion. Mion. Very well. Please take care of the matter. Goodbye. Mion suddenly changed her tone and hung up. She must have done that to escape from my questions. I was furious. I started redialing the number, but then I remembered that we decided she hang up, hang up the phone after using that phrase when she saw the hag coming. I doubted she actually saw the hag, but it was the rule, so I couldn't call back for a while. I went to the bathroom to wash my face and cool down. I turned the faucet. The water felt lukewarm. It didn't help me cool down at all. I'm disgusted by my own childishness. I just wanted to fill my void. I didn't care about him, considering that Satoshi-kun was very generous, but I don't know if I can forgive Satoko. That's a different story. Notebook, page 26. I was looking up at the ceiling with my arms and legs spread out. It's not that I wasn't getting hungry. I didn't live with my parents. I didn't live in the school dorm. That meant I had to cook something myself when I wanted to eat. I knew that, but I still didn't feel like getting up. It had been, se it had been several days since I began this empty life. It must be tomorrow. The Watanagashi Festival, I mean. I heard the doorbell ringing. I ignored it at first, but it rung persistently. I started hearing knocking alongside Kasai's rude voice. shion san please open up. I bought some food for you. I didn't ask him to. He must have known that I hadn't eaten enough and that I had been feeling down lately. 
You haven't eaten, have you? No, I'm not hungry. But when Kasai put the food on the table, my stomach reacted in a very primitive way by making some noise. Your stomach is growling. I believe, I believe you need to eat. I was hungry, but had no appetite. I mean, I did have an appetite, but didn't have the energy to eat. Yet, I feel bad wasting the food Kasai had brought. I picked up my chopsticks just to humor him. I thought you were marked by the hag. Is it okay for you to be here? Oriya-san is busy with the festival preparation meetings. She doesn't seem to have time to deal with you right now. Didn't you like croquettes? Hmm, they're good. Thanks. While I nibbled on the food, Kasai read through the magazines I bought. Have you, uh... I never talked to Kasai about something like this before. Since I'd always... I've always believed myself superior to him psychologically, I hesitated to show my weaknesses to him. That kind of hardship is healthy for your age. Uh, hey, do you know about that? Miyansa told me a little about it. She said she wanted me to assist you. She did, did she? Tch. She looked worried. Your sister is looking out for you. Without responding, I threw the last croquette in my mouth. I thought you might want to know how Satoshi Hojo-kun is doing. I've gathered some information. Would you like me to report? That's not necessary, but since you went through all the trouble, I think I'd better listen. Kasai chuckled, but stopped quickly as if thinking it was rude. It seems that Tepei Hojo fled the premises. He seems to be staying at his mistress's place in Okonomiya. Tepei? Who's that? Oh, Satoshi-kun's uncle, huh? Their aunt, Tamae Hojo, Satoshi, and Satoko are the only ones living in the house now. Ever since Tamae learned that Tepei had fled to his mistress, she's been in a foul mood. Foul mood. So that must mean that the aunt is being even nastier to Satoko, and Satoshi-kun is taking even, even more indirect blows. I don't know about Satoshi-kun, but I heard that Satoko-san looks very miserable. The neighbors are spreading rumors about her. About her. If Satoko looks miserable, that means Satoshi-kun must be going through equally miserable torture. Can't you do something about that aunt? Doesn't anybody talk about, talk about punishing her? She's also one of the remaining Hojos, after all. The uncle is gone, so why not the aunt? The main Sanazaki family ruled against further harassment toward the Hojo family after the death of the couple. They say the police still might be taking, staking out their house due to suspicions about the couple's death. Their deaths have been filed under Yashiro Sama's curse, so the Sanazaki family thinks no further divine intervention is necessary? Kasai put on a faint smile. Come to think of it, it is hard not to suspect the involvement of the Sonozaki family in all the incidents said to be Oyashiro Sama's curse. Somebody strives to get rid of the hag's concerns on the day of the, of the Watanagashi festival. Furthermore, the Watanagashi festival is going to be held tomorrow. Will the curse strike again this year? If so, who will be the victim? Now that I think about it, there were cases of multiple victims in the past. The first and third year, it was just one, but the second year, the victims were a couple. So it wouldn't be too strange if two people fell victim this year. It seems like a good time. It would be best for Satoko and her aunt to be the victims. Satoshi-kun will be freed from every source of his worries all at once. Kasai. Do you know if this year's victim has been selected already? Hmm... Does the hag make the, the, make the decision? If so, Sis should know about it by now. Kasai, do you know anything? Shion-san, I don't know anything about that matter. Well, that makes sense. That kind of secret won't make, won't make its way to you, because you're just small fry. That's true. I've never received any information regarding from, from what regarding that from my connections, but as you know, the Sonozaki family has access to many underground organizations, which I have no channels into. Maybe I could try asking Sis about it, but she won't talk. She's strict about keeping promises, unlike me. 
If the hag told her to keep a secret, she'd take it to her grave. Damn. I hope Satoko and her aunt will go missing this year. No words. Hey, Kasai, I just thought of that. Aren't you going to do something about it? Shion-san, you must be joking. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I took a glimpse at Kasai. It didn't look like he was actually going to do something to make my wish come true. I wasn't able to go to the village as myself, so I definitely wasn't going to the festival. I didn't care about that. Even so, I was interested in who was going to end up as the victim of the curse. If I just kept lying on this couch playing hooky, somebody would fall victim in several hours. I had no clue why it had to happen every year, but I was certain that the hag was behind it. All the enemies from the damned conflict had been punished. Only the Hojo couple was left, since most of the other enemies had already gone. The cicadas were crying loudly outside. It made me feel hot. Why was it this hot and humid in June? Well, it's fucking summer, what do you expect? If Oyashiro-sama was actually punishing people, I'd pray for one thing. I'd pray that the evil ant would be punished, and I'd offer up Satoko as a sacrifice. Huh. It's hot. When I woke up, Kasai had already gone. Looks like he cleaned the table in the surrounding room. He put my dirty laundry into the hamper in front of the washing machine, too. Being a girl of a sensitive age, I didn't want a man to clean my room. <laughs> I didn't want a man to clean my room. Well, I'd rather thank him than badmouth him. I looked at the clock. It was late afternoon. I had to go grocery shopping. There was nothing left in the fridge, and I'd be having just rice for dinner if I didn't go. At that moment, the phone rang. It must be Kasai, I thought. I did hope it was him. I could have brought more food, so then I wouldn't have to go shopping. While I was just being lazy, I didn't feel like going out at all. But it wasn't Kasai on the phone. Sis, where are you calling from? The house? Uh, no. I'm calling from a payphone, so I'll make it quick. Satoshi called me. Satoshi-kun did? He called you? Probably wasn't me he wanted. He called you, I think. It sounded like he wanted to apologize for what happened the other day. So I thought you should take the call. No words. I told him that I'd call back because I was busy. So, can you call this number? Um, okay. I was stunned for a second, but then recovered and wrote down the number on the back of a magazine. Thanks. I'll call right away. Good. He's been extremely stressed these days. I don't think he'll, he'll listen to me anymore, but I think he'll listen to you. She could have pretended to be me and handled this call, but she passed it over to me. Thanks, Mion. See you, Shion. Before she hung up, I put the handset down. Then after a second, I dialed the number in a flash. I heard the dial tone three times, four times, and there he was. Hojo residence. He sounded like an adult. His voice sounded a bit tired too, but it definitely was the voice I loved. I got scared. I was scared that he might become sulky again if I mentioned my name. I couldn't open my mouth for a while. Uh, is that you? Satoshi-kun? Oh, sorry that I called you so suddenly. Are you okay now? That was the Satoshi-kun I knew. He didn't sound cold like the other day. Yes, I'm okay now. Uh, good. After that, he went silent. I felt the urge to start a conversation. It wasn't fair. He was the one who called in the first place. Then, he finally spoke. I'm truly sorry for what happened the other day. Uh, hmm. I'm sorry too. You don't have to apologize. Because I was the one in the wrong. If this were a face-to-face -face conversation, he would be stroking my head. It was sad just talking to him over the. F it was. It was sad just talking to him over the phone. I won't forgive those people who forced us into this situation. Mike be close to them, but it was never you personally. So I wanted to apologize. No, please don't apologize. I was selfish and didn't try to understand your situation very well. 
We apologized to each other a few times. Are you alright, Sachishikun? You're working and you're under a lot of stress. Isn't that too much to handle? I quit my job, since I have enough money now. You did? That's good. You don't have to push yourself anymore then. That's really good. Satoshi Kun tried to say something, but he dropped it instead. Satoko has a far worse than me. No words. Seems like it. Is she alright? Does she look alright to you? He suddenly sounded upset. I messed up. Oh shit. So sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was so stupid. I had ruined this miraculous conversation with him. Satoshi Kun didn't respond to my apology, so I stopped apologizing. She was tortured until she was literally torn up, and everybody abandoned her. Everybody did. I, I didn't... I tried to calm him down. I hated what I just said because of how hollow it sounded. I had no idea what to say next. I felt guilty. Satoshi Kun was desperate to protect Satoko from their evil aunt, but I'd wish that Satoko would die tomorrow because of the curse. I was trampling on his desperate hope. Satoko can't take it anymore, so... What the heck? He cut himself off in the middle and went quiet for a moment. He must have been choosing, he must have been choosing his words carefully. Then he finally spoke. His words sounded hollow. I mean, I wanted to have fun for one night. Eh? What do you mean? The Watanagashi Festival's tomorrow, isn't it? I want you to take her there. Yeah, I can do that, but why? She's exhausted, so I think she'd be happy if she could get away from our aunts for even just one night. But why? Why? It's not that I didn't understand why you wanted her taken to the festival. What I didn't understand is why he was asking me to do that. Was there any reason he couldn't take her there himself? I had a hunch that he might disappear, so I kept asking. What do you mean, why? Why don't you take her yourself? Um... He fell silent. Satoshi Kun isn't good at lying or keeping secrets. It was clear that he wanted to hide something. I just have some stuff that I need to take care of with my work tomorrow. So I can't go to the festival. He was lying, but he was also stubborn. He wouldn't admit if I accused him. Mian, can you take her there tomorrow? No words. I wouldn't want to look after Satoko, even at Satoshi Kun's request, but I'm also glad that he's relying on me. I know it's ridiculous to ask for your help after that incident, but you're the only person I can turn to now. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know, though, that I wasn't going to turn down his request. Okay, but just for tomorrow, alright? <laughs> I hope you'll keep looking after her. What are you saying? I won't do that. Just for tomorrow. He sounded as if he were going to disappear tomorrow. I didn't like the sound of that, so I intentionally sounded sulky. We talked about trivial stuff for just a little while. When the conversation was almost over, Satoshi Kun asked something else. Hey, Mion, I really hate asking this since you might think I'm crazy for saying it, but... Huh? What? You... Uh, <laughs> don't believe in it, right? Believe in what? Um... In no Yashiro Sama's curse. Uh... <laughs> what are you talking about, Satoshi Kun? Oh, Yashiro Sama curses those who leave the village, right? Oh, Yashiro Sama's curses. I mean, curses those who leave the village, right? That's the rule. Every kid in the village knows that. <laughs> That's the rule. What's with that suddenly? Are you planning to leave? Though I was kidding, I wanted him to deny it. I'm not thinking about that anymore. He admitted that he had thought of it. I guess Reina told me that much. That's good. So you're not leaving the village? No, but I haven't been forgiven yet. Eh? Satoshi Kun tried to say something but hesitated. He was breathing so heavily. Was he sick? 
Hey, do you feel alright, Satoshi Kun? Uh, sorry. I'm fine. I guess you're tired. I think you should get some rest. He sounded distantly more sickly from when this conversation had started. He breathed heavily when punctuating his words. Satoshi Kun repeated his question. Mion, I'll ask you one more time. Do you believe in Yashiro Sama's curse? What did he want me to say? Could I make him feel relieved with my answer? How should I respond? The answer was simple. <laughs> There's no curse. There can't possibly be. I didn't know what was bothering him, but I wanted to make him feel better by laughing his worries away. No words. But Satoshi Kun instead fell silent. I couldn't tell if he was happy with my answer or not. One thing was certain. I didn't make him feel any better. Sorry that I asked such a weird question. Uh, sorry. I felt like I had let him down, so I apologized in a, hu in a rush. Whether it's a real curse or somebody's conspiracy, I won't disappear, and I won't fall victim to it. Y you won't disappear. No, not until I buy that teddy bear. I'll get the money pretty soon. I won't go anywhere until then. He chuckled. I knew he was trying to relieve me, but it worked the opposite way. He sounded as though he didn't care what would happen after he bought, bought the teddy bear. Oh, my aunt is home. I have to go. Oh, okay. Mion. Huh? Even though he wanted to hang up the phone because of his aunt coming back. Satoshi Kun took a breath to tell me something important. I'll leave. Sotoko to you. I should have said yes right away. But I still couldn't forgive Sotoko, so I just kept quiet. No words. Forget what I said. Bye. Oh. He was obviously disappointed. What had I done? I wanted to apologize. I wished I could. But it was too late. The dial tone left no doubt. Now that was depressed. Now that was depressing. And that ended just that. <clears throat> now this now this feels very conflicting right there. Uh, received new tip, a torn diary. Let's see, uh, plea ignored. So what, you know what, from what Satoshi said, when he said that, I'm, I'm going to leave Satoko to you, um, I need you to take her to the festival, or some shit like that. This reminds me of the third chapter, when, um, Keiichi, um, asked to me on this, this, the, almost a similar way. So, um, yeah, <laughs> this felt very... Yeah, I was like, hey, wait a minute, that felt familiar. But yeah, let's read this torn diary. Somebody whispered to me from behind. They told me that I was going to be the victim of the curse this year. So I'm going to disappear soon. There will be nobody left to take care of Satoko. Somebody whispered to me from behind. They told me that I don't have much time. That I won't stay as myself for much longer. So I had to make the best of the days I had left. What could I leave for Satoko? She wanted that huge teddy bear. She wanted a peaceful life in which nobody would bully her. I whispered to the person at my back, Bestow your violent nature and formidable strength upon me. I want your peaceful mind filled with hatred. And that's the end of that diary then. So he was trying to rely on a Yashiro Sama's curse just so he wants to plead vengeance on someone from that tip but I guess this is it so next part let's move on to the sixth part or sixth chapter of Miyakashi so like comment and subscribe and see you guys later have a good day